Get excited because on this week's episode of Golden Key Design, we're going to be building this bed and this headboard. Stay tuned to see how I did it. To build a floating bed, it's basically a smaller box underneath a larger box. And to build those boxes, we're going to be using two eggs. So now let's get to cutting them down to size. I'm going to start with the smaller box and just going to build it with four 2x8s and I'm going to use mitered corners on the front two corners and I'm going to use butt joints on the corners that will be touching up against the wall. Rather than building it directly on my floor which might be a bit unlevel, I'm going to be using this MDF sheet to make sure that everything is on the same plane as I screw it together. So because lumber isn't perfect, even though I got pretty good boards, uh, the box wasn't perfectly square. So I put two clamps in the corners and put them together like this. And as I clamped it down, it squeezed the box. And I made sure that it was square so that from each diagonal, it's the same distance. And I can also use my speed square in the corners and make sure that it's a 90 degree angle. Then I'm gonna use these braces in the corners to lock that position in. And that way I can get rid of the clamps and it'll stay square. All right, so we just finished building the base, which is the smaller box beneath the larger box. Uh, and I added in these cross braces. I think that adds a lot of rigidity to the structure and make sure that it stays square. And as you saw, I filled the screw holes with Bondo. I've never used Bondo before. I normally use a different type of wood filler, but I really like it as it dries within about 10 minutes and you can sand it and it's extremely hard and it leaves a really nice finish. And if you need to, with that quick dry time, you can always apply a second or third coat to fill in any remaining holes. I started with the smaller box that's going to be on the bottom and painted. Uh, because if I did make a mistake here or there, it was probably not going to be seen. And now that I'm comfortable building it, I'm going to be now building the larger box that sits on top and supports the mattress. Let's get to it. So now that we have all of our pieces and we laid it out and make sure everything looks good, uh, the next step is to screw everything together. However, first we actually need to rip down this middle board as there's going to be slats going across here. And if we leave it at this same height, the slats will be bowed like this. So we need to rip this down by the thickness of the slat, which is three quarter of an inch. So let's take this out to the table saw and do that. All right, now that that's cut, it's time to put everything together. And in order to conceal my fasteners, as well as to strengthen up this frame, I'm going to be using these steel 90 degree brackets from Simpson Strong Tie and also going to be using their structural screws to install them. Let's get started. A very easy way to install this would be to drill your screws in like so. However, this is going to be the front of the bed and I don't want to see any screws here. And even if I were to cover them up with wood filler, I think you'd still kind of notice them. So instead, I'm going to be toenailing it in from the backside. So I'll put a screw in from the top at a slight angle and then go in down the side as well at an angle catching this board as well as going into this board, making sure not to poke through the front. All right, now that we have the center support in, we can now install the slats that go in this direction that will support the mattress. They will rest on this, but they don't currently have anything to rest on on the outside. And that's what these two by twos are for. I'm gonna cut them to size and install them onto these two boards here, three quarters of an inch beneath the surface so that when the slats are installed, they sit flush with the top of these outer boards. Let's get started. In order to make sure that I'm installing this two by two at the right height, I took an off cut of my slats. I'm gonna put it up against this outside piece and make sure that the tops are flush with one another with my thumb. Then I'm going to take my pen and mark the underside. And then I have a line here and that's what I can line up my two by two against to make sure that these are at the right position. All 
All right, so we put our slat supports up on either side. And before we put our slats in, we have one more step. We have these two pieces here that will go like this and like this, except down into the bed. It's just a little bit of a snug fit, but you'll see in a moment, but those will basically go right here. And those will line up with the smaller box that'll go beneath the bed and that'll support this overhang and help with the cantilever. So let's go ahead and install those. It is now finally time to install the slats. I had eight of them to go across and I calculated what the gap needs to be for them to be evenly spaced and I just cut that as a spacer block. So I'll put this like so and then put my next board right here and I'm gonna be using two screws on each, screwing into those joists that we put in before and I also might screw in some screws in the middle too. Let's get to it. All right, so I just finished cutting the two by six perimeter that will be basically a ledge around the mattress. And I can't really install those because I need to go underneath the slats to do so. So I'm actually gonna move everything into the bedroom, make sure everything looks good. And specifically, I wanna make sure that you can't see this little box underneath this larger box. The whole point is for it to be a floating bed. Pretty sure I got my proportions and measurements right, but I wanna make sure that you still can't see it before I start finishing everything. Also, when this larger mattress box is on top of this little box, I can get underneath and screw in the perimeter, make sure the miters all look good. Then I'll probably unscrew it, and then I can sand and stain everything, and then reinstall it. Let's get to it. Now that we are done sanding, we can now start the finishing process. I'm going to be staining and applying polyurethane to all the perimeter of the bed, as well as these ledges that go around the perimeter as well. I'm first going to be applying wood conditioner since this is pine and it's very porous and this allows the stain to go on more smoothly. After that, I'll be applying early American stain from Minwax on all the pieces. Then after that's dry, I'll be applying a oil-based polyurethane and a satin finish. Ideally, you apply stain and polyurethane on a flat surface. However, I don't want to take this entire bed apart, so I'm going to be doing the perimeter while they are vertical. However, I do have to be very careful to not have any drips in either my stain or my polyurethane, so I'm going to have to pay careful attention there. For the ledge pieces, I was able to take these off so I can do them all on a flat surface. And also, I put down some screws here so that they can be propped up off the surface, and that way the stain and polyurethane doesn't get affected by them laying directly on the bed. So now, let's start with the wood conditioner. As I mentioned, the wood conditioner helps the stain go on a lot smoother, and this is a step that a lot of people skip, and it results in a lot of blotchy staining, so don't miss this one. After letting the stain fully dry, I moved on to the polyurethane, and I find it best to use a foam brush for this application. And don't worry, it'll go on glossy, but it will dry satin. As I let that dry, I put on my first coat of primer on the smaller box. All right, it's been about four hours and the first coat of polyurethane is dried. So now I'm taking 320 grit sandpaper and just a block, and I'm just going to run it across the board pretty lightly because you don't want to go through the stain. So just taking down some of the high spots and then backing up any of your dust and then apply a second coat. As I let the second coat of polyurethane dry, I applied some black paint to that smaller box. And this doesn't technically need to be painted, however I painted it just in case you might see it if you look down there. Alright, so we got everything put in place, but now we have to secure it. I made sure it was level before doing so, and now we're going to be taking four 13-inch blocks and installing them in each of the corners 
of this smaller box underneath the larger bed platform. And the purpose of that would be to secure the smaller box to the larger box on top. So we're gonna put one in this corner, this corner, this corner, and this corner. And we're probably just going to be putting in about three or four screws on the top and three or four screws on the bottom. I'm also going to add some toenail screws as well as screwing in this top platform into any studs I can find in this wall. Basically, we're gonna be overkill with the screws and this is just to make sure that there won't be any rocking with the bed or if someone that's a little bit heavier sits on the very edge of the bed, it's not going to tilt or anything. So let's get to it. All right, now the bed is super secure. I sat on the corners and I was perfectly fine. And if you want to be more secure, you can screw this smaller box into the subfloor if you really want to be safe. But I think this is perfectly sturdy. So next up, we have to install our LED lights and I got them on Amazon. I'll link them down in the description. And these have a motion sensor so that when you walk into the room, they'll just automatically turn on. And then after a set period of time, I'll probably make it 60 seconds, they'll shut off. So if you've got to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, you don't need to flip a switch or anything, it'll just turn on automatically. So I think that's a really nice feature. I have about 16 feet of cord and the perimeter of the smaller box is about 15 feet. So I'm probably just gonna use that to adhere the LEDs to and then I'll see how that looks, see if there's any weird shadows or anything. And if I need to, I can always pull it off. Ideally, it'll just work the first time, but let's get to it. I then secured all the slats to the middle support. Oh, thing is pretty sturdy. And here you can see those motion sensored lights in action. Alright, we're calling an audible. I really like how this ledge frames in the mattress, however, I think I made it just a little bit too big, specifically the overhang. The overhang right here is about three inches. When you walk in the room, you can see this board down here very clearly, and I think it definitely contributes to the effect of the floating bed, especially with the lighting. However, when you look down this side of the bed, or even this side, that overhang extends too far out to the point where you can't see this vertical board beneath it, and I think it slightly ruins the effect of the floating bed aspect. So, unfortunately, I'm going to take all three of these boards off, rip them down by one and a half inches, cut them to size, and then reinstall them. And now the overhang will go from three inches to one and a half inches. I think proportionally that'll look a lot better, as well as giving more of the floating bed effect, too. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So as you can see, I cut my new border pieces and I'm really happy with the way that they turned out. They still give a nice edge to the bed, however you can definitely see more of this vertical board and I think it contributes a lot more to that floating effect and it looks a lot better too. So it did take a little bit of time, but I'm glad I did it. Now that the bed's complete, it's time to move on to building the headboard. This won't be too complicated. I'm going to be using a half inch seat of MDF. I'm just going to screw that to the wall directly. And I have some old leftover boards from demo that I'll be able to reuse from a different part of the house. And I'll put those up on the headboard, just nailing them in a horizontal pattern. And then I'm gonna be putting a black border around it. So it's not too complicated, but I think it'll really look nice and tie the whole room together. So let's get started. size it's basically flush with the very outer edge of the ledges on either side of the mattress however the height may change this is currently at its uh, max height this is 49 inches which is what the MDF comes in from the store however I do think that's a bit high and a bit too big for the room I'm thinking somewhere about a third of the way up of these lights 
Originally I was gonna do about half, but even that looks still pretty big. Uh, it just doesn't look proportionally the right size. So I think I'm gonna do about 40 inches off of the ledge. So if I measure 40, that'll come to about right here. So I'm gonna take off uh, nine inches. This is 49, I'm gonna bring it down to 40, and I think that'll look nice. I'll bring it back in one more time just to check to make sure because although it's a lot of work bringing it in and out, it's definitely worth it to visualize it and see it and then, then put in the work as opposed to putting in the work and realizing you don't like it. Uh, so anyway, let's get to it. All right, we finally got it back in here. I ended up putting it in reverse. I had to flip it around because of the outlet hole, but I'm really happy with the proportions now. I think 40 inches was the right height. I think it looks big enough, but not too big. So now we're just gonna screw this piece of MDF directly to the wall. Uh, I'm just gonna find some studs, put in some like two and a half inch screws, and that'll be perfectly secure. Then we're going to be installing those boards. And for that, I'm just probably gonna pin nail them directly to the MDF, and then I'll put a board around it. So again, not too hard, but I think it'll look really nice. Let's get to it. All right, so I just finished picking my final pattern for the boards. I wanted to vary the color as well as the width of the boards. Uh, and I kind of highlighted the ones that are my favorite a little bit toward the top so the pillows and mattress don't block those. So now I'm gonna take all these out to the miter saw, cut them down to the correct size of 69 and 5 16 and then I'll take my nail gun and install them. Let's get started. Now before we install all those boards, I prefer to put the border on so we have a positive stop to push the boards into. So I'm just using some one by twos that I cut to size. I'm just gonna quickly prime them and then paint them black. Let's get to it. That's going to be a wrap on this project, and it's probably one of my favorites to date. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something along the way. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments below and I'd be happy to answer them. And I really think those motion sensored lights really tie this whole bed together and truly make it a floating bed. And again, I'll leave that link down in the description if you want to buy them for yourself. And please like the video if you guys enjoyed it, and also subscribe if you haven't already as I post a new DIY video every single Saturday. And next Saturday, we'll be covering more of this bedroom renovation. Specifically, we're going to show you how to build those two side tables flanking the bed. And as always, thanks for watching, and happy building. See you next week.